Right then, so welcome back to another video and today we're going to be taking a look at what Photoshop has to offer in Photoshop version 25 or Photoshop 2024 because for some reason we already have Photoshop 2024 in September. Don't know why but we're going to look into what it has to offer because there's one major thing that's been teased in the past couple of months and some people have even got a bit of beta of this in the past couple of months. So we are now in Photoshop 2024 as you can see on my beautiful MacBook up here it says Photoshop 2024. So I think we'll cover the big big thing towards the back end of the video so we'll look at the main point towards the end of the video but we're first going to look at a few other things. Photoshop 24 or Photoshop version 25 doesn't have that many new features. I'm going to put a list, uh, there's not that many new features but so sort of the features that it does have is obviously generative fill and expand which is the new Adobe AI which we'll be covering a bit later on in the video. We also have generative credits in Photoshop now which we'll also cover a bit more when we cover the generative fill AI expand in the later part of the video. We have the new interactions within the remove tool which is a sort of a simple little upgrade but also a very very useful upgrade. And then obviously finally just some general improvements to how Photoshop runs. So let's have a look at what the new updates the remove tool has for us. Now first of all let's understand where the remove tool is, very important step. So if we come over to our toolbar over here and you go where it normally would be showing the spot here in brush but it will, if you just click on it you'll find the remove tool. Now I'm going to give myself a nice little image here in Adobe Photoshop, this is a random one I found of Google. And I'm going to demonstrate what the old brush used to do on the new Photoshop. Going back to the tool, what the old brush used to do, it used to be a brush, okay, so the old remove tool used to be a brush, you used to be able to do that like that and you watch it will remove, it's very complex colours so give it a minute. It would just remove basically, okay, like a brush and what they have now done in Photoshop version 25 is they've actually made it so you can use it like a lasso tool and remove a whole area, for those you know what the lasso tool is, basically you can draw stuff with the lasso tool and it's just easier. So if I just cancel this, otherwise I'll be here all day. If I just say, draw around that, it's now said that entire part that I've drawn around needs to be removed and it's gonna eventually remove it. Obviously my MacBook is running OBS at 4K, Photoshop at 4K images and everything else. So we'll give it a minute to do that. But that's one of the big kind of, well, I say big, there's not many features that have been added to Photoshop 25 or Photoshop 24, whatever version you want to call it. It's officially called Photoshop 25, but not many features have been added to be honest. Little features make the big difference. So whilst that's doing that, let's talk about the new bug fixes and just kind of the overall performance. So one of the features that have been disabled actually in Photoshop version 25 is the preset sync. So in Photoshop 25, you can no longer preset sync and it's been discontinued, full stop, that's it. The feature is no longer functional. So don't try and use your preset syncs because it is not going to work. And the other kind of little bug fix and enhancement is the just improvements on startup and initializing views on demand are so basically just overall kind of improvement as they always do with any software anytime it comes out literally just improving the performance of the software on smaller and less powerful or less able computers so this is all i didn't really understand when i was made when i was making notes for this video but they have done new additions to the contextual task bar to help with masking and crop in workflows so um, i think this is something to do with when you were learning photoshop but They've just added more tools to the contextual taskbar. I've never used it. If you know what it is, drop a comment down below. And uh, also subscribe whilst we're thinking of comments. Um, okay then, so we're now on like the big, big thing that everyone's been talking about. And if you are part of the Photoshop beta program or uh, you had Photoshop beta downloaded a couple of months ago, you will have had already a little chance to play around with this. We finally have generative fill in mainstream Photoshop. And I am very, very happy to see that we have some generative fill. So we're going to have a little look at what generative fill has to offer now. Generative fill is obviously said no longer in beta, it is built into the mainstream Photoshop as you can see here this is Photoshop 24 which is the mainstream version, I'm not in a beta version. Okay so everyone now has access to this generative AI model which is very very cool and I do recommend if you are going to be using it make sure to read uh, the terms and conditions, not terms and conditions, basically the rules around using it. It's an AI and it won't make certain things. I'll leave a link to it in the description and I'll put a picture on screen so you can have a look. A little bit behind the scenes, well not behind the scenes, but a little bit of background information on the new generative AI. So it is all ethically sourced from Adobe Stock, which is again linking to an Adobe platform. It also 
uses Adobe Firefly, which is Adobe's AI model, um, which Adobe Firefly then uses Adobe Stock. It all kind of links in together. If you if you use the generative fill, Photoshop will now automatically for you amend the content credentials to images when you've used generative AI, generative expand, kind of stuff like that. And obviously only if you export it in PNG, JPEG, or if you save it when you've used it. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the selection tool and we're just going to say, all right, I want to put something here. And we're going to do generative fill. So once you click on that generative fill tab, which will always come up as kind of like a little pop-up thing, simply you can type what you want. So I don't know, uh, YouTuber. I'm going to type YouTuber and just see what it comes up with. So you can see that word wasn't very specific, so it didn't know what to do. But if we do a iPhone in a hand, Okay, a bit more specific, I get a bit more detail. I actually use this for making the thumbnail of this video, by the way. Little tip there. If we give it a second, it will... Uh, that really does not look like an iPhone to me, but uh, apparently we have two hands. Well, apparently we have six fingers now. Again, this AI is pretty funny to play with, but also if you gave it more detail, it would do better. That one's actually not bad, but it looks like it's an iPhone 1. But if you're not happy with the results, you can always press generate again, and you, we'll see what comes up with this time. Well, you'll see what it comes up with this time, eh? Yes, see what random rubbish it's going to come up with this time. So confused, so confused. Um, an iPhone with something on the screen, okay. Um, I actually don't know, it gave me better results before, I promise. So our final little quick topic for this video, again this is a very short video, so I was expecting more from Photoshop 25 I must admit, but it made the video short for me, so it's my first video back since this very viral video here that has literally just gone poof, and now we're somehow at 5,000 subscribers. Well, 5.6 I think at this point when I'm recording this. The final one is obviously generative credits. Now generative credits are for Creative Cloud paid members or it's Adobe Express premium members. And these generative credits basically give you access to content creation features powered by Adobe Firefly. I personally have not looked into this very much because I looked at this when I was making the notes and I was like, eh? But Again, if anyone knows anything, drop a comment about these new Adobe Creative Generative credits in Photoshop. I don't know what they do, don't know how they work, but apparently I've got some because I'm a Creative Cloud Plan member and I pay the ridiculous price for the Creative Cloud Plan. Yeah. <laughs> so if you enjoyed the video, do not forget to click the red button, which is just below my face, probably down there. And also click the little bell next to it so you know when I upload my next video, which is weekly at Wednesday at 7 pm every week hopefully ish maybe hopefully also leave a comment and leave a like and follow the socials which are on my screen now open for the video and i'll see you guys in the next one bye for now